Here's the equipment that I use for forming the tube. Pliers, a knife, drying rack, 22 gauge brass wire, a mandrel with a wood handle, and then a source of heat that could be an alcohol lamp, a gas stove, or an electric stove. I always work with the cane wet. I take the cane out of the water and my first step is to score the cane. I make five marks. First, a mark down the center, two other marks off to the right hand side, two marks to the left hand side, then I repeat the process on the other side. Notice that I'm making my mark from below where the second wire starts. Once I've scored the cane, and that's to help it crack evenly, I then take a little bit of material off the edges. This is called beveling. You can do this either by scraping the knife like that or by just removing a little piece of it by slicing it off with the knife blade. Some people use sandpaper, others use a file. Um, any of those methods will work fine. I then examine the reed the last time, make sure it lines up, everything is in order before I put on the wires. My wires are cut to about three inches in length. I center the wire on the reed, bend the right hand side around the reed on the top, left hand side around the reed on the bottom. I make sure that the wires are not crossed but they're parallel to each other. I form an X in front of the reed. Uh, bringing the needle nose pliers in, I hold on to them, whoops, it slipped there, hold on to them in the middle of the X, twi twist uh, clockwise, pull, take up the slack. I don't over tighten those wires, I only take up the slack and then cut off the excess. The second wire is then applied in the other direction on the reed. Again, bending around on the right side on top, left on the bottom, form an X, put the pliers in, pull, twist, take up the slack, pull again, twist, take up the slack, cut off the loose ends, adjust the wires so they're in the right position. Notice my number is appearing below that first wire. And then the last wire, the third wire, is put on in the same direction as the first wire. Once again, I bend the ends around, form an X, pull, twist, pull, and twist, and cut off the excess. Adjust the wires. Keep the reed well soaked. Put that back in the water. And then last preparation before I'm ready to form the tube is to open the, the base of the tube there slightly enough that the mandrel can be inserted. Okay, I've got to straighten up that third wire there. Very good. At the university, I have an alcohol lamp. Uh, sorry, I forgot to bring it home for this demonstration. So instead, I will heat my mandrel on the electric stove. You can also heat your mandrel over a gas stove as well. So when the mandrel has reached the temperature I like, and it's heating up a little bit more here, notice I'm rotating it to make sure it heats evenly, I will then pull out the reed from the water and insert the mandrel quickly into the base of the reed. I twist the mandrel as it goes in, take my pliers, and gripping the reed, I'm forcing the mandrel in, 
and I'm beginning to crush the reed. And I mean, really, I crush those fibers, crush them so it forms evenly around the mandrel. I watch for cracks forming. If I see a big crack forming in the center or off to the side or something, I immediately take steps by encouraging even cracking around the barrel. And because I can see this with the uh, barrel naked, I can uh, remedy the situation immediately. The um, third wire is going to be completely round. The second wire is still somewhat oval. But here again, I'm really crushing the reed, exerting a lot of pressure. I'm not crushing the wires. I just simply uh, move the wires so that they're rounded to form to the barrel. And then once I'm satisfied with that, I push the reed onto the drying rack. Then I put a rubber band around the reed. This also helps the barrel to uh, form and conform to the right shape. Once the rubber band's on and I've satisfied with that, I tie it off and the tube will be dried in about 12 hours. God bless you. Thanks so much for watching this video.